Hi everyone, I am Cory Joe Humphries or we CJ and welcome to Commander Class. So this week we'll be talking about the enemy dual colours. If you don't know what that means, last week we talked about the colour pairings of the allies and this is the enemies. So what realistically means is that all five colours in Magic the Gathering are put into pairs and then the pairs are put into two separate groups, allies and enemies. Last week we talked about the ally group and this week we will be talking about the enemy group. So this week will be a slightly little different from last week uh so last week we talked about the two colors their name and their logo and then gave a description with a like a fair few cards in each one uh saying what the two colors are known to do and giving examples and then giving a kind of honorable mention at the end of each double pairing uh, that took way too long for me to edit and I barely got that episode out so this week I am showing it down it is still going to be the two pairings the name the logo except for I'm going to give uh, less examples of the card needed so I will explain what the dual color is known for and I will give examples but instead of like four detail cards of each one it'll only be two and then I'll give an honorable mention at the end of each one still but again it will only be two cards the most of each one so the first dual pairing we'll be talking about is white black also known as orzov and this is the logo on screen now so orzov is known for its life drain which usually means there's cards that kind of get rid of your life and give it to me so it'll be kind of like best example is target opponent loses 10 life and you gain 10 life and I'm going to give two examples of really known and good Orzov life drain cards. Debt to the Deathless for X, two white and two black you get a sorcery that is in uncommon. Each opponent loses two times X life and you gain life equal to life lost this way. Agent of Masks for three white and a black you get a creature human advisor that's an uncommon. At the beginning of your upkeep each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to life lost this way and it is a 2-3. The second thing Orzov is really known for is exiling cards. So usually most stuff is to destroy or get rid of which usually means it enters the graveyard. However exiling means it goes to exile instead which is kind of out of the game completely and is very hard to get them back into your hand or onto the field. Orzov is really good at exiling permanents in the game. And here are a few examples of them on screen now. Unmake for three hybrid mana for white or black, you get an instant that's a common exile target creature. Merciless Eviction for four white and a black, you get a sorcery that is a rare. Choose one, exile all artifacts, exile all creatures, exile all enchantments, or exile all planeswalkers. And as always, here are some honorable mentions of Orzov cards. Modify. For one white or a black, you gain instant that's an uncommon, destroy target creature or enchantment. Death Grasp. For X, white, and black, you get a sorcery that's a rare. Death Grasp deals X damage to target creature and you gain X life. The second colour pairing we'll be talking about today is black green, or also known as Gilgari. And on screen now should be the Gilgari logo. Gilgari is very known for its graveyard recursion which realistically means if something is in your graveyard you get to put it back into your hand or onto the field. I've also heard people say your graveyard pretty much becomes your second hand and here is two cards that's really good with graveyard recursion. Bloodbound March for two black and a green you get an enchantment that's a rare. Whenever a creature spell is played each player returns all cards with the same name as this spell from his or her graveyard to play. Desecrator Hag for two and two hybrid manner of a black and green, you get a creature hag that's a common. When Desecrator Hag enters the battlefield, return to hand the creature card in your graveyard with the greatest power. If two or more cards are tied for greatest power, you choose one of them and it's a 2-2. Two, two. Dual carry cards also have a tapped ability or a mana ability on some of their creatures that regenerate, which means if the creature's on the field and someone kills it with murder or attacking or any other way, you can tap the mana and regenerate it, which means it comes on the battlefield tapped, but it is still alive. And here are two examples of creatures with regeneration on them. Lotleth Troll for a black and green. You get a creature zombie troll that is a uncommon. It has trample. Discard a creature card, put a 1-1 card on Lotleth Troll. It has tap a black, regenerate Lotleth Troll, and it is a 2-1. 
Odious Throw. For a hybrid mana of a black or green, you get a creature troll that's a common. Tap 1 and a hybrid mana of black and green, regenerate or thrust troll, and it is a 1 1. And the last thing Gilgari is known for is its permanent destruction, which usually means cards that stay on the field, so realistically, not instants and sorceries, because they only stay on the field till their job is done and then they're gone. Cards that stay on the field, lands, artifacts, creatures, and enchantments mainly, they're really easy to destroy in Gilgari because Gilgari is really known for it is permanent destruction. Here are a few examples of Gilgari cards that destroy permanents. Purify for one black and a green, you get instant that's an uncommon. Destroy target artifact or creature, it can be regenerated. Gaze of Granite for X, two black and a green, you get a sorcery that's a rare. Destroy each non land permanent with mana value X or less. And as always, with Gilgari, here are two honourable mentions Mailstorm Pulse for one black and a green, you get a sorcery that is a rare. Destroy target non land permanent and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. Consume Strength for one black and a green, you get instant that's a common. Target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Another target creature gets minus two minus two till end of turn. Thirdly, we will be talking about green blue, or also known as Simic, and here's the Simic logo on screen now. When it comes to Simic, mainly it is two different things that it does. One being plus one plus one counters. Now the difference between plus one plus one counters and plus one plus one is at the end of the turn, anything that is not a counter goes off the creature or permanent that it is on where plus one plus one counters stay on the creature so if there is a creature that is a one one and you put a one one counter on that creature it becomes a two two and it stays as a two two but if you have a creature that is a one one and you give it plus one plus one until the end of turn at the end of your turn it goes back to be a one one here are two simic cards that work with plus one plus one counters phantom mage for two green and a blue, you get a creature wizard that's a rare, it has a folk, and whenever a 1 1 counter is put onto Phantom Mage, you may draw a card and it is a 1 1. Nimbus Swimmer, for eggs, green and blue, you get a creature Leviathan that is an uncommon, it has flying. Nimbus Swimmer enters the battlefield with eggs 1 1 counters on it and it is a 0 0. The next thing Simic is also known for is its card draw. Card draw is cards that let you kind of draw extra cards on your turn so usually on your turn you only get to draw one however there are many cards in Magic the Gathering that let you draw more cards throughout the game and Simic is known for that. Drawing is counted as one of the most strongest things you can do in Magic the Gathering and Simic is known to be one of the best colour pairings in Magic the Gathering so it lets you draw a lot of cards. And here are two Simic card drawing cards on screen now. Cold Eyed Selkie, for 1 and 2 hybrid mana of a green or blue, you get a creature Mirfolk Rogue that is a rare. It has Island Walk. Whenever Cold Eyed Selkie deals combat damage to a player, you may draw that many cards. It is a 1 1. Biomantic Mastery, for 4 and 3 hybrid mana of a green or blue, you get a sorcery that's a rare. Draw a card for each creature target player controls, then draw a card for each other creature target player controls. Finally, at the honourable mentions of Simic. Yavimaya's Embrace for 5 green and 2 blue, you get an enchantment aura that's an uncommon enchant creature. You control enchanted creature, enchanted creature gets plus 2 plus 2 and trample. Winged Kotal for 1 green and a blue, you get a creature snake that's a common. It has flash, flying, death touch, and it is a 1 1. Next, we'll be talking about the colour pairing blue red, or also known as Is It. Here is the Is It logo on screen now. So when it comes to Is It, it was kind of the hardest for me to find research and talk about it because Is It's only really good at kind of one thing. However, a lot of Is It decks are made of separating blue and red. So the only Is It thing is kind of copying your instants and sorceries and then doing other stuff with those abilities. So there is a thing called Storm, where if you play a card that has the word Storm on it, you get a copy for each time you've cast an instant sorcery on that same turn. There's also creature cards that get more powerful for each time you have a Storm count or every time you've cast or copied an instant or sorcery, it gets plus 
how many instant sorceries you've played that turn till end of turn. So a lot of my research on is it, is it just saying is it's really known and very well at copying instances and sorceries and then doing multiple other things with your storm count or how many times you play instant sorceries. The rest is just cards separating it. So it's usually like blue cards let you draw more, red cards do damage. They're separated out. There's not really many is it cards that do multiple different things. So it was very hard for me to do a lot of research on is it alone. But here are some examples of really good is it cards. Storm King's Thunder for three red and X, you get an instant that's a mythic. Whenever you cast your next instant sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell X times may choose new target for the copy. Colvin casting for five blue and a red, you get an enchantment that's a rare. Whenever you play a multicolor instant or sorcery, you may pay one. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new target for the copy. And then also just because I've done it with every single one, here is two honorable mentions of visit guards. Skits and Motive. For one blue and a red, you get an instant that's an uncommon. Target creature gets plus four plus zero until end of turn. Another target creature gets minus four minus zero until end of turn. Mage Fire Wings. For a blue and red, you get an enchantment aura that's a common. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two plus zero and has flying. And then lastly, we will be talking about the color pairing red white, or also known as Boris. And here is the logo of Boris on screen now. When it comes to Boros, it is known to kind of be the weakest dual color pairing in Magic the Gathering. Uh, it kind of only really does, it does many things because of the separation of white and red cards. However, when it comes to Boros cards singularly on their own, they kind of have a similar theme of doing high damage during combat, multiple combats, powering up your creatures during combat. They are very combat heavy. So Boros is known to, or during your combat or just before your combat, power up your creatures. You can have many creatures or one very powerful one and then attack with double strike, trample and all of that. And here are two honorable mentions of really known Boros cards. Agros costs Wojek Veteran for three red and a white. You get a legendary creature, Human Soldier, that is a rare. Whenever Argus costs Wojek Veteran attacks, Attacking red creature gets plus two plus zero and attacking white creature gets plus zero plus two until end of turn and it is a three three. Arcrone Hoplite. For a red and white you get a creature human soldier that is an uncommon. Whenever Archon Hoplite attacks it gets plus x plus zero until end of turn where x is the number of attacking creatures you control and it is a one two. And as always here are two honourable mentions of Boros cards. Kiroden Yelling. For a red or white, you get a creature beast that's a common. It has vigilance and haste and is a 2 2. Lightning Helix. For a red and white, you get an instant that's an uncommon. Lightning Helix deals 3 damage to any target and you gain 3 life. Now that we have gone through the enemy dual pairings, we finally now know all the mono colours and now all the dual colours. So, next week episode, we are going to be starting off with 3 colour cards or 3 colour decks. However, there is a lot of them and they are grouped into three separate kind of groupings and the first one we'll be talking about is shards so there are three color combinations i cannot remember from tom ed i think there's six but i will be talking about the shard three color pairings on next week's episode so stay tuned for that and remember to like subscribe follow on my social media share this around because i like doing these videos and i hope you enjoy them too and I want to continue growing. So please share this and I will see you in next week's episode.